that you are giving to us to be here today to come and learn your word. We pray that as you want to go and listen to your word, that your spirit will come into our midst and you will teach us your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There shall be deliverance. Amen. There shall be holiness. Amen. And we will possess our possession. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it be all of you, O Lord. Amen. Destroy the power of the enemy. Amen. Let this your work profit us. Amen. Let it prosper us. Amen. And let it bless us. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you, Daddy. Bless the hearer. Amen. Bless the speaker. Amen. Bless, bless as, as many as is watching and that we hear this word later. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Thank you, Daddy. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I greet each and every one of you again, welcome you to this wonderful time of studying the Word. We have today the title that talk about anxiety. What did I say? Anxiety. 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 Uh, this is common to men. Anxiety, can you mute your phone? Until we have the time for question and answer. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, anxiety is what is common to men. Because anxiety creates fear. Worry, worry for nothing is not good for we that are children of God to be a part of the people that is anxious for tomorrow. I read the text, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and I'm reading with amplifier so that we can get the clear message. Do not be anxious or worry. Another, worry, another word for anxious is worry. Or careful. You are too careful you become a suspect. You suspect everything. You suspect every war. You turn every thing. You begin to uh, looking for tomorrow that is not yet come. And you are too over anxious. That is, that is uh, you know, anxiety. And the Bible said, do not be anxious or worry about anything. Anything means anything. If the scripture said, don't do something, it meant what he said. And he said what he mean. But in everything, in everything, every 
circumstances and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving continue to make your specific requests known to God. Precision prayer. Specific your need. What is your request? The Bible encourages us that we should ask until our joy will be full. It's not for us to create curiosity by exercising and exhibiting anxiety. Anxiety leads you to nothing but depression. I pray that everyone that have this anxiety, the Almighty God will relieve you by the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want you to, I want you to, uh, let's look at that scripture in, in another version of the scripture. Now, if you are hearing me, you can open to it, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. If you have your Bible, you can read it to me, apart from Amplifier that I just read to you. The book of Philippians. Yes. Correct. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. nothing. So, uh, that is what the Bible says. That's a uh, King James uh, uh, version, right? This one is. That, uh, that is what you read, my sister, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, God bless you. Say, so be careful for nothing. But by request, make your, by, by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request to be known. The NIV said, don't worry. New Living Translation said, don't worry about anything. Why worry? Why worry? Why worry, worry when you can pray? We have a God that answers prayer. There's no need for you to worry. There's no need for you to be afraid. There's no need for you to have anxiety. But pray. Instead, pray about everything. There's nothing that is too big to pray about. And there is nothing that is too small to pray, to pray about. What are, you know, a lot of things that we forfeit because we do not Pray. That is one of our aim. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. That is New Living Translation. I pray that the Almighty God will make His word to have impact in our life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, now, what is anxiety? Anxiety is defined as a feeling of worry. You just feel, you just this, just this worry. You just wake up. You just, you just, you just worry about tomorrow. You worry about the 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 work that you didn't have or that you have. You worry about the the power that that you will use to do your project. You worry about the money that you don't have or that you have. You worry and care about. You know, your children that you have no control or have power over. You can be worried about your work. And right now, there are coronavirus that are afflicting uh, people all over the world. You worry, maybe this can come to you or come to your territory. You might forget about the word of God. And the Bible says we should not worry. We should not be careful. We should not be anxious. We should not have anxiety instead of it. We should pray unto God about what we need. So, as I begin to define anxiety as the meaning of anxiety, one of it is worry. Nervousness. We are just nervous. You don't know what tomorrow we bring. We are just nervous. And unease. You are not ease. You are just too fearful. You are you you look left, you look right, you look up and down. You are at you are not at ease at all. Typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. The fear of unknown. This create anxiety. And we as children of God, we are encouraged in the word of God instead of us being worried and afraid. We should talk to God. 
Anxiety will create a vacuum in your life if you allow it. And that vacuum will lead to nervousness. That is all what happens to the people that have this anxiety. You will be easily irritated. When you have anxiety, things will irritate you. You know, somebody is calling, somebody is talking, you will be irritated. Even something that doesn't concern you. You take it as something that is a big deal. These are as a result of anxiety, nervousness, and agitation. You begin to agitate for little or big things. There's no big deal in this world. Take it cool. Efara bale. But when you begin to have anxiety, that is when you agitate. You agitate about race. You have an anxiety about what your wife do, what your husband did, didn't do. About what your kid do or what your husband didn't do. You just answers for everything. On easiness. And some people can wake up in the night and begin to cry. Because of this anxiety. You know? So, all these are as a result of anxiety. When you begin to appear to people or you begin to appear to yourself or acting in an unsteady way, you are not steady, you are not the person that you used to be, then let us pause and see, did I allow anxiety in my life? All this is a product of anxiety. I pray that the Almighty God will deliver all from this spirit of anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. People that are in Africa, they have an anxiety. People that are in America, they have anxiety. Anxiety is a common thing. It's a spirit that if you allow it, it will take control of your life. And the Bible encourages us that we should not allow the spirit of anxiety instead. Whenever we have a concern, we should take it to God. We should thank God for what he has done before in our life. And then we can ask him for what we need. Precision prayer, specific prayer. Tell him and he will hear. Anxiety is not a good thing at all. It's very bad. It's always leading to uncertain outcome that bring fear into the life of men. You will not be yourself. When you have anxiety, fear will come into your heart. And that fear has torment. That fear is very cruel. And the fear that will come is going to make you not to be yourself. You can't get yourself together. It's like somebody that runs from far, from far, far to fire. So anxiety is something that you have to deal with in your life before it actually affects you more. Than what you think. The scripture warns us that we should not entertain anxiety so that we will not have any reason to fear at all of what the future or tomorrow will bring to us. Because we don't know tomorrow as a man. But God that knows tomorrow, why don't we give Him the chance in our life to take care of our tomorrow? There is nothing that we are going through now that God doesn't know the solution. And he has given unto us free check to call upon him. He said, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Why exercising anxiety? This world is cruel. Yes, it's true. This world is unfair to many. Yes, it's true. But that does not mean that we should have anxiety. Or that we should be afraid of tomorrow. Because something happened to somebody does not mean that it's going to happen to you. What God wants you to do is to trust Him. Not to fear what is going on around you. Remember His word. If you are passing through water, they will not overflow you. If you are passing through fire, He said it will, be here, it will be there with you. It will not leave you, not forsake you. We should hold on to the promises of God instead of you to be afraid. And begin to exhibit fear that anxiety 
brought into your life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious or worry about anything. About anything. That means anything. Anything at all. Opposed to Paul said, What shall separate me from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Famine? Is there things that is now here, yeah, now, things to come? Is there nothing we be able to separate me from the love of Christ? Now, those are the people that knew what they were serving. They are not careful. He said, I have learned to be okay when I have a lot and when I do not have. They didn't allow anxiety to create them. No, when you pastor and maybe it's a small church and the people don't know how to give, he begin to do a tent. He begin to do a carpentry work. He begin to work as labor to feed himself. Now, we as children of God look at our situation. Maybe you have money today, tomorrow you may not have money. That should not create anxiety into your life. If you are broke, does not create anxiety into your life. You just be at rest. Because faithful is he that has called you. So, anxiety is not good. So, the Bible says, do not be anxious or worry about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation in life, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known unto God. And I pray God Almighty we answer all our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay. Um, the Bible is very, very clear. It's very, very clear about the way it asks us as children of God to behave. We have a manual. We have a mirror in the scripture. The word of God is our mirror. It's our manual. It's, it's our prescription. Like a medicine. To treat all our ailments. Where we are sick. Where we are weak. The word of God is, has power to be able to deal with everything that we need to deal with in our life. So another word for anxiety, or to be anxious, is worry. So don't worry. You do not need to be worrying yourself about what you don't have control over. Instead of you worrying yourself, why don't you be happy? So create an atmosphere of happiness in your life. Number one thing that happiness do is that it makes your life to be better. You know? Uh, when you wear laughter, it's best cosmetic. When you begin to smile and you begin to happy, people will say, ah ah, eleoni, problem ni. Because this, this attitude we create is very, very, is very, very, uh, you know, infectious. It, it, other people that are hungry or that they are sad, when they see people that are smiling, something will trigger in their mind. That why I mean let me participate because when other people see you smiling and, and see you happy, they too they will be comforted. These are the attributes of the children of God. We are supposed to fill with the joy of the Lord. Allow happiness, not anxiety, not bitterness, not uh, hatred, not depression in your life. Anxiety could be a spirit that brings doubt. And fear into your life. But you can choose to allow the spirit of joy and gladness to rule your life. Instead of anxiety. Instead of spirit of anxiety. Allow the spirit of joy of the Lord. Joy is part of the fruit of the spirit. Allow it to rule your life. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The strength of the children of God is the joy of the Lord. When you begin to have joy of the Lord, you will be encouraged, you will be empowered. Whenever sadness wants to come, let your heart overrule it by the joy of the Lord. Think about the goodness of God. When I think of the goodness of the Lord, I'm all. He has done for me. 
Mafeli so sa singe Alleluia Praise God for saving me Think about the salvation of the Lord Many of us, before we gave our life to Jesus Christ We were a sinner But through the mercies of God We were saved We were redeemed We are Covered by the blood of Jesus. And we that were in darkness before are now in the light of God. Let us think about that. Let us think about yesterday. Let us think about the day before yesterday. Let us think about last month. Let us think when we were young. Some of our men could not make it to this day. So uh, Let us think about what God has done for us. That other people... I'm still praying to her. So those are the things that is going to make our joy to lift up and leap up in our heart to begin to appreciate God instead of us begin to sad. Don't worry, be happy. Jesus is Lord. Somebody say, don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. Because, because Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Is Lord. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. God has given you all the spirit of power and of love. God has given you spirit of love and of sound mind. God has not given you the spirit of anxiety that's going to lead you to fear. The fear of unknown, the fear of tomorrow. What are we eat? What are we drink? No, those are not the spirit that God has given to you. God has given to you in his world the spirit of power with Christ on my side. I can do everything. Through Christ that strengthened me. Uh, Jesus Christ said, I will send unto you a comforter, Holy Spirit, that will begin to remind you of everything that I've taught you. Now, we will begin to read the word of God, the Spirit of God begin to remind you of uh, the promises of God for you in the word of God. So, you are empowered by the word of God to do exploit. And of love. God has given you the spirit of love. And God has given you the spirit of sound mind. That your mind, your mind is renewed. Your, your heart is sweet. In hearing the word of God. And you are strong. Don't allow the devil to create fear into your life. By an anxiety. Fear. Anxiety brings fear. So don't allow the devil to shift him. Anxiety and fear into your life. Don't be anxious. The, the solution is that don't be anxious. Don't look at other people's blessing and begin to say, I wish, I wish, I wish. Oh, and then you begin to do all kind of stuff. You begin to struggle to be somebody that you are not. Because you are unique on your own. You are great on your own. God has made each and every one of us great in our own area and gifting. And therefore, don't be anxious. Don't be too, too over serious. Don't be too over ambitious. God has not given you the spirit of fear. My brother, my sister, you are not to fear. In fact, you are not to be like other, like somebody. You are to be what God wants you to be. The spirit that God gave you is the spirit of power. There is power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody said there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is power in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, there is healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is nothing that you need that is not in that name. There are power and there is power in the blood of Jesus and the name of the Lord Jesus. Just call him and then he will answer you. The spirit of love, that is the spirit that God has given to you to love your brother, to love your sister. To love your parents, to love your children, to love your husband and your wife, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love your boss, to love your pastor, to love your brethren in the church of God. These are the spirit that God has given to you. Love, L-O-V-E. 
Jesus Christ summarized all the Ten Commandments to love. Love God and love yourself as you love your neighbor. In other words, you have this gift that God has given to you. Not spirit of anxiety. It's spirit of love. And then of sound mind. The mind that is sound. The man that always rejoices the Lord. Like wisdom said, he rejoices in the presence of the Lord. It is a soul that has wisdom of God that rejoices in God and in what God can do for him. David said, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what man will do unto me because he knows that God has power over everything. The Lord Jesus, in his teaching, thought that we should not have anxiety about life. You look right thought. Us. Put that thing on the on the on the on the on the moot. I can hear children talking. Moot, moot it. Jesus Christ in his teaching taught that we should not have anxiety about life. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus Christ said, Therefore I said unto you, Take no thought for your life. Look at that. Take no thought for your life. That is the word of Jesus. Jesus Christ was what I was teaching. What ye shall eat, what you shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Can you imagine somebody depressed because of what they will eat? Because a lot of people are depressed now. You may not know that because God has, give, God has blessed you to have a lot of food in your freezer, in your refrigerator. But there are a lot of people right now in this world that are depressed because of food. Even right here in America. That are depressed, that they go into the dustbin, they go into the dumpster to begin to look for their daily, their daily, their daily food. Another man, uh, one man tries another man treasure. So the Bible say that you cannot be thinking about what you will eat or what you will drink, not. Not yet for your body. Don't think about your body. What you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than heaven. It's not that word, the clothes you will put on. What kind of clothes I'm going to put on? You don't have to depress about that. But these are real, real things and common things that make some people to depress. Food. What they will drink. They think about their life. About tomorrow. And what they will wear, and as the president, and the president, a lot of people could say, Oh, because they want to have a group uh, clothes, they don't have, they can't avoid it, they can be depressed, they can have anxiety, and can do all kind of things for them to be able to buy that kind of clothes. The Bible asks us that we should be content of what we have, such that we have. We should not be, be greedy or envious about what we don't have or what we can't have. Instead of that, let the love of God rule our heart. Let us, let us allow God to take control about it and let us have a mind that is sound in the word of God. The truth about the matter is that most of the things we worry about as small, they are very small things. We worry about it. Actually, they didn't want our stress at all. I don't know what people can think it very well. What people are stressed about, what they have anxiety about. When they tell it to other people, they say, What? Is this what you are depressed about? That's not a problem. Now, for example, now somebody that is depressed because he doesn't have a dinner. To some of you that you are hearing me now, it's like, what? Can they depress about food? Yes. Yes. A lot of people depressed. Now, what they will drink? A lot of people 
have not drink juice for, for, for months. Uh, some people, you know, uh, you know, you know, can can afford good drinks. And they are depressed about that. Now somebody sent me a video. Somebody sent me a video. One of my pastor friends sent me a video. I saw in Nigeria that I don't know maybe it's a government or but it's a prophet is one of these uh, uh, boss. I don't know, maybe the person go and buy bread though, maybe the bread they belong to. And they saw they begin to fight against bread. About bread. They begin to, you know, fighting and the car was about to move gradually. They were they were fighting now, fighting about bread. I said, God have mercy. That's the word that I sent to the pastor that sent it to me. God have mercy. Now, a lot of people can be depressed about that because maybe they didn't have a piece of the bread that they were sharing. Now, things is happening in the world and the people can be depressed. But I want to tell you, if you are hearing my voice right now, that you should not be depressed about anything. Not food, not what you're going to wear, not the house you're going to live. Allow God, come to God and allow God to take control of your life. What you don't have today, you will have more than that if you allow God to come into your life and come and reign in your life. So, what we are stressed about is nothing. But we allow the spirit of anxiety and fear to take off our life. For example, you won't worry about your life and you should not worry about your life of what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear jesus said it's not life more than meat there are a lot of people that turn hunger to fasting instead of them to go and sing instead of them to the pray they turn into prayer and god we in his evening mercy show forth for them. I had a pastor friend, he came from Nigeria one time and he was telling me about one of his experiences. He went to the church, he has his assistant pastor. What did they have? Nothing, no, no money. He's a full time pastor, and then nothing, nothing. So, nothing, no, nothing, nothing. So, and he's hungry. And the other pastor was hungry too, so he doesn't have money. So he said he went to his office and he began to pray. He said he began to pray, begin to pray, begin to thank God, begin to pray. And then he was in the spirit. He was, he was praying for almost two hours. So a friend, one of his friends came and uh, saw the assistant pastor and said, where is pastor? He said, pastor in the office. So the, the man opened. Um, and saw the pastor as he was praying. He said, no, 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 no. He cannot you know, interrupt this man the way he was praying now. So, so let's all give him some time. So after two hours, they came back. And the man of God handed uh, his prayer. And then they look at him and say, the way we saw uh, you, I came before, said, well, why don't you come in? Uh, uh, the way we saw you. <laughs> We don't want to interrupt your fellowship with uh, with God at that time. So the man said, you know, ah, so what now? The man, the man of God said, right now, I need food. So they took him to the restaurant and, of course, uh, you know, you know, buy food for him. And after the guy was going, he gave him 2,000 naira. He said that 2,000 naira was like 20,000 naira to him. God that saw his need when I brought somebody. Somebody that he has, he has he said he's seen that man for a long time ago. And that day, it be the same hour that the man of God needed food. And he was praying to God. And God went and bring and go and bring that man to come and bless him. He gave him food and then he gave him money. What a God that we serve. He is a provider, is the overjury. Instead of us to go and see, he could go and see now. He could go, if, if the man of God is not, is not genuine, he could go and deceive. He could go and, and tell lies, official to other people so that they can give him money. 
or he can create fear in the life in the in the life of his uh, of his uh, uh, follower to give him food. No, because he know who is serving. When I have and when I don't have, I will choose to be on the Lord's side. God will arise for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. So you will find out that. All the things that we are stressed about, we are not supposed to be stressed about it. What we are worried about, we are not to worry about it. Food, drink, our life, what we will hear. Jesus said, food, life is more than me. Yes, indeed. Life is more than food. Life is more than what we will drink or the clothes that we will put on. The unbelievers seek for those things. That is the teaching of Jesus Christ, but ye as a child of God, ye as a believer that believe in the supernatural provision of God, should put your trust in God, in God unveiling love and ability to provide for your need. There is no need that God cannot provide. So we do not have no reason to have anxiety for what we have or what we don't have. Matthew chapter. 6 verse 31 to 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. The Bible says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you need all these things. But seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, when unbelievers are going astray because of what they will eat or what they will drink, we as children of God, we are not supposed to go astray because of what we're going to eat or what we're going to put on. That is the plain gospel. To seek the kingdom of God first in everything. Not money, not fame, not power, not not even your life, but to seek the kingdom of God. Before you act or do something, think about that you are God's children, that you are a child of God. For Think about what God says in his word. Think about the word of God before you act. Think about that the angel of God sees you and God sees you wherever you go. What will Christ have me to do in this situation? Supposed to be the question that we begin to ask ourselves before we act, before we do anything, either in the open or in the secret. What is the counsel of God in this situation? What is the counsel of God for my life in this situation? In these, in these circumstances, what will God have me to do? These are the questions that we must genuinely answer so that when we act, so that we will not be depressed again of our wrongdoing. Look, because of what you want to eat should not be the reason why you should have anxiety. Not at all. This kind of anxiousness will lead you to astray. It will lead you astray from God's commandment. And you will soon go deeper and deeper into error. A lot of people now that are in error, and some of them doesn't know how to come out about it, is about what they will eat. Some of them are deceived, and some of them have been deceived. Now, there are people of God right now that they are torn to be their children because they join people that lie. They use Christ to lie. Now, there are children of God because of what they will eat. They have changed. They isn't they have changed from working with God. They have, they have, they have, they become, they have, they have turned back. Now, the Bible says, Dema love me because he loved this, Dema have forsaken me because he loved this present world. Is there anything in our lives that creates anxiety that will love this world more than God, more than, more than Christ, more than the word of God? We should be careful because these are the things that lead men to ungodliness and error. And deeper you go in error, deeper it is hard for you to come back. But I'm talking to you, my beloved, that you should not allow anxiety or fear to rule your heart, whereby you will go astray from the law. I pray anyone that has gone to error, the Lord Almighty will bring you back in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You cannot because of 
of what you want to eat deny Jesus or disobey his word. You cannot disobey the word of God, deny him because of what you want to eat or because you are afraid of the consequence of your action. Don't have anxiety. Just be plain and God is able to take control by everything. Maybe you are tempted. Another thing that people do is that when they are tempted, they fall in that temptation. With a situation to deny or to defy your body. You are tempted, and this is common. You are tempted with a situation to defy your body by adultery or by fornication before you can get a job to bring food to your family. Now they tell you that they have to sleep with you or you have to sleep with them before they can give you job so that you can bring food into the house. No, as God's children, the scripture clearly warns us not to fall into source error. If you fall into that sense error, the scrap is still be there. I pray that as many that are falling in this, the Almighty God will heal you in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Though other may do it, that's supposed to be that is coming in our heart. Other may do it. Children in the house, youth in the house, hear my word. Do not allow anybody to deprive you of your glory, to take your glory away from you. Because of what you will eat or what they will give to you, either monetary or max, you know, or, or you know, what, what, if you fail the subject and you, and you, and you, and you go and read your book again and you pass it, you more better off than for you to pass the subject and defile your body. These are the way of ungodly, but you that are children of God, you cannot do it because there will be temptation that the devil will create for you to fall in. But because the devil has saw something that you didn't see, he saw your glorious future and he want to destroy it. And he want to create into you a vacuum that it will be hard. Unless by the grace of God to, 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 to clear from your mind for what kind of evil that has before you because of the care of this world. I pray the Almighty God will have mercy on the children of God all over the world in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Not about your body, but adultery or by fornication. No, if they can't give you the job, let the job go. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as children of God, the scripture clearly warns us not to fall into such error. Though others may do it, but as, as one who has been bought with a price, who has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, we cannot do that. We cannot do such practices. It is the practice of the world. The world will say there's nothing wrong about it. There's nothing, you know, you know, everybody do it. Just clean and chop your mouth, you know, everybody, you know. They will try to rationalize it, but you as children of God, you are different. Now, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 15. I'm going to read from verse 15. The Bible says, Know ye not. Look at this now. You as children of God, know ye not, say I owe money, you know ye not that your body are the members of Christ. Look at that. Now, you as child of God, no situation should take you out from the word of God, from the will of God. Because we are the body of Christ. We are the members of Christ, me and you. In as much as we are giving our life to Jesus, we become the body and the member of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an allot? God forbid. In other words, when you join yourself to the ungodly, when you join yourself to allot, when you mess your body, when you defy your body by adultery or by fornication, what the Bible says is that you have turned the body of Christ to allot. And the Bible says, God forbid. What know ye not that he which joy to an allot in one body for two 
Say he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the law is one spirit. Flee fornication. In other words, flee fornication and adultery. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. In other words, when you have been tempted to defy your body by fornication or adultery, the Bible says that sin is very grievous because you sin to your own body and you sin to the body of Christ. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And that is where it's now terrible. Because sin to the Holy Ghost have no forgiveness. When you now sin to the Holy Ghost, now <coughs> God is your. I pray that the, the mercy of God will show for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Which is in you, which ye are of God, and ye are not your own. You now, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are no more your own. Christ is the one that ruled your body. For ye are bought. Look at that. I love that piece. For ye are bought, ye mean in in uh, in uh, King James all that all of us are bought with a pride. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In other words, our body Himself, because God resides there, He said is God. So we should use our body to glorify God, not to bow down for the tempter, for the temptation, for the love of this world, and for the cares of this world, and then. Allow the, 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 the glory of God and the body of Holy Ghost to be put into the mouth and done with the aloe. I pray that the Almighty God will have mercy on us in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Now, the world may do it, but you are children of God, you cannot do it. You can learn from the case study of Joseph, brother Joseph, in a foreign land, in Egypt. In a foreign land, Joseph refused to fall. By the free offer of said that his boss, while willingly offer to him, Joseph respond, respond was, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Now, how will I do wickedness? This is a wickedness. Now, in Pharaoh's land, in Egypt, it might not be wickedness. It might be everything, you know, of course, you know. So, just clean and chop. I'm going to be feeding you. I'm now. I'm the boss now. I'm the, I'm the wife of the boss. So don't worry. You'll be enjoying yourself now. The boss has a lot of uh, wife and concubine. So me and you, let us just begin to. Serve. And Joseph said, No, I can't do this. It is only you that in this whole house they are giving me all the other because the house of Potiphar was doing well when Joseph get there because the spirit of God was with him. He knew the word of God. He was taught by his parents. With the word of God and he was an obedient child of God and uh, the promises of God was upon him he was a dreamer he actually saw a future when he was young and that was why they hated him they hated him and his brethren conspired against him you know the story but God was using all his enemy as a stepping stone to get to his destiny I declare by the word of God that you are hearing me all your enemy and your tempter, they will become a stepping stone to your destiny in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I will get to where God wants me to be. I will get to where God wants me to be. You know, Satan could not stop Joseph. Satan will not stop you in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus. Now, in Genesis chapter 39 verse 9, let's hear what Joseph said. There is no greater in this house than I. None. Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee. He said his boss has not kept anything back from him but the wife. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That was somebody that knew that he has a God and a God that detests and hates sin. So don't allow anxiety of what you will eat. You could have said, wow, ah, let me eat and chop. And I'll begin to enjoy myself. No, don't allow the anxiety. Or what you will lose. Don't allow what you will lose if you don't be like the ungodly. 
or what you will gain, or what you will gain. Don't allow it to create damages and regret that will last a lifetime in your life. When you enter into error, to come back, it might be very, very hard. Let your heart cleave to the promise of God and seek the kingdom of God first in everything. Let your heart cleave unto God. What God has me to do? Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, King, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. They didn't allow their enjoyment. They were, they were ministers. They were, they can, I will say they were governors in their in their in their in, 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 in the foreign land. And the Bible says, they say, we cannot bow down for this idol. What are the idols that you are bowing down for because of anxiety of this war? They say, if our God is not able to deliver us, we will still not bow down. But we know that our God can deliver us. And then they put them in the foreign corner. You know the story. God in his infinite mercy delivered them. God will deliver you from all the temptation that the enemy will put before you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We don't know when the temptation will come, when the tempter will come, but what we know is that when we choose to be on the Lord's side, there is power to deliver and to save you from the tempter's hand. So, don't allow the devil to take your future from you. Joseph prevailed in the time of temptation and it became what God intended for him to be. His destiny was not truncated. It didn't allow anxiety to distract him from doing the will of God. I pray that God will give you power and grace to be what God intended for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Another scenario that we can drive, maybe you are approached by unbeliever, and this is also common, that introduce, they introduce ungodly group for you to join. They say, come and join them. Come and join them. There are church. Jesus, uh, church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Church of Mormon. They say, don't worry, join, join our group. We serve Jesus and then we serve we serve the devil at the same time. We serve, we serve God and Mammon together. Now, maybe it's another group that they they are doing ungodly things. Now, maybe they are the people that are preaching now, Church of Satan. And now they are everywhere. Maybe they are gangs and occultism all over, all over. You know, you know, uh, you know, uh, the world and all uh, and, uh, and 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 people. Uh, you know, uh, are joining them because of what they will gain. Maybe that temptation they introduce you to join ungodly people, ungodly group, or other in order for you to get contract or for you to get connection in higher place in the world. It could be either to win election if you are a politician. Or to be popular, maybe you are a musician, or perhaps joining your courtesan, whatever that it might be. But you know that this is ungodly because every appearance of the devil, as a children of God, you're supposed to know. You are not supposed to be unequally yoked with unbeliever. You that is born of God cannot be caused of fear of what you want to benefit. Allow anxiety to trip in and set in into your life. Allow the world to deceive you and lure you into something that you know that is wrong. You cannot do it. Do this. What is this? Is all what anxiety creates? You are looking for a job. You don't get a job, and then you carry your application, and then they say, "No, well, come and join this group. Oh, if you join this group, this ungodly group, you will get connection. You get work. Now, when you get that work of know of what benefit that work is going to be for you. As children of God, we have to be wiser than the enemy. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you. Don't give chance to the devil to enter into your life because if you give him one step, I'm telling you, the devil will go one mile in your life. 
and you are the one to regret it because the money will have no meaning for you again because you have taken control of your life. Just be careful. Be careful. Be careful. As a child of God, don't allow enemy to deceive you. Second Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Unbeliever can do all those kind of things, but you are different. For what fellowship as righteousness with unrighteousness? Nothing. Righteousness and righteousness. Darkness and light. They are different. They are different. They are different. When Moses brought his rod and he became a serpent in the presence of Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked the magician to do the same thing. But the good thing about, about light is that he always overcome darkness. The rod of Pharaoh began to swallow all the serpents of the magician. So, and the magician has no more power because all their powers has gone. gone. That is the power that is above power. Now, I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, there is no, no agreement. We cannot be unequally you with unbeliever. No fellowship that we have with unrighteousness. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness. What communion? We are not. We are not, dif we are not the same. We are different. And what concord? Look at that. At Christ with Belia. You, you cannot join the Belia children to do, to do evil. You cannot be equally you with unbeliever. Or what part? Look at that. What part at he that believeth with an evil dead. You as children of God, what I try to create to you to begin to work among the evil dead. These are the careful of life, of what you will eat, what you will become. Be careful. And what agreement at the temple of God with idol? You as a child of God, you cannot be in in, a, in 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 occult you cannot be among the brotherhood or uh, what they call them huh? you know you cannot you know this is clearly written the temple of God cannot be with idol for ye are the temple of the living God God resides in you you are the temple of God as God has said, I will dwell in them. God said he will dwell in our heart. And I will walk with them. He said he will walk with us. And I will be their God. God said he will be our God. And they shall be my people. They shall be my people. We shall be the people of God. We are for, we are for, my brethren. We are for, come out from among them. And be ye separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God will receive us in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my son and daughter. Look at that. Say the Lord Almighty. Swear the Lord. Say the Lord Almighty. I pray that the Almighty God will give us the grace not to allow this word. To penetrate into our heart, whereby we we uh, you know allow the spirit of anxiety to take control of our life, then so that error cannot come into our life in the name of the Lord Jesus. We will not allow error. Mm -hmm. We will not allow the devil. We will not allow the tempter and temptation to remove us from the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Any question? Any question or contribution? The last scripture. The last scripture? Second, Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18. 
Second, the first one was First Corinthians. You get that from verse fifteen. Okay. So the second one is Second Corinthians chapter six, from verse fourteen to eighteen. Question. God bless you, ma. Yes, ma. Is anxiety a sin? Anxiety, yes, it's going to lead to sin. Anxiety, when it come to you, it's just like the Bible says, be angry, but say not. When you allow the spirit of anxiety, it will lead you to fear. It's going to lead you to fear. And then you begin to worry, and then this anxiety will create an avenue for you to sin and do something that is not good. So it will lead to sin. Anxiety in itself is not a sin. But it will lead to sin if the person allow it to rule in his heart. And that is why the Bible says we should not allow that spirit. We should not be anxious for anything. So it didn't say we should allow we are to, to, be, to have anxiety for small things. Is it for anything? We are allowed, we are encouraged not to have anxiety at all. Either big or small. And uh, it always leads from small to big. And that is why the scripture clearly warns us that we should not allow this spirit of anxiety to rule our heart. Instead of that, we should think about what God has done, the goodness of God, and begin to thank God. So that what we don't have, we will know that we can call upon God and the Lord will do it. The Lord that has been grateful to us in the time past, He can do it for us. And we as children of God, maybe we ask God for something and God has not answered us. The answers of prayer are in threefold. Number one, God can say, I'm going to give to you, and He can answer us immediately. Sometimes He might ask us to wait. So during the wait period, time is not the time for us to begin to be anxious or have anxiety. This is the time for us to be at rest and believe what He has said. And then on the third one, He can say, No, I'm not giving to you. Yes, God may not give unto us, even though that is going to hurt us, that is not going to be to our own benefit, or that we end our from heaven. And I pray the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other question? If, if we are worried about missing the rapture, because we are sinning, is that, is that bad? If you are what? If you are worried about missing the rapture because okay. we are sinning, Ah, yeah, no, we, we should not be worried about missing the rapture. What we should be doing is that we should make our way right with God. Because it is the, by the mercies of God that we will be counted worthy. Meaning that we should do all what we have power to do in living holy life, in living a righteous life, and do the will of God. The rest is at the hand of God. We should not be worried. Maybe God will take us, God will not take us. The Spirit of God bear a witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and that settled the case. The rest, the, the thing we're supposed to do is to believe the Word of God that said that in my Father's house are many mansions. If I are not so, I will have told you, as I'm going now, I'm coming back to take you unto myself, that where I am, that you will be there also. So we should believe that. Anxiety can create the fear of, oh, will I make heaven? No, we should not allow that. It's not the Spirit of God. We should trust the Word of God. Our path is just to live holy life. And paraventure we sin or we enter into error, we should immediately ask God for forgiveness. If it concerns somebody that we need to make restitution, we should do that. If it concerns somebody that we need to apologize, we should do that. Just try as much as possible to live peacefully with all men and follow holiness because without, without that, no one can see the law. Do you understand, my daughter? Any other question? Any other question or contribution? If there is no, if there is no more question, let us pray. Do you have any question? Okay. If there is no any any more question, uh, next week I'm going to ask. We are going to continue on this uh, uh, teaching next week. Let us 
ask God, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, help me, O oh Lord, help me, O oh Lord, not to allow the spirit of anxiety, not to allow the spirit of in my life. In my Open life. your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Christ. Lord God Almighty, I pray, O oh Lord, don't allow me to have the spirit of anxiety. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Lord God Almighty, help me, O oh Lord. Not to allow the spirit of anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Le ma santa kala ba santa kala ba yele ma santo ko yele ba hata kala yele ba. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let us ask God. Say, Father, cover me with Your blood and remove every anxiety and worry in my life. Open your mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Oh Lord God Almighty, cover me with your blood, remove every spirit of anxiety and worry in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus of Christ. Lay my Santa Kala, my Santa Kala, my Yelima, in the name of the Lord Jesus of Christ. Cover me, oh Lord, with your blood, remove anxiety and worry in my life in the name of Jesus of Christ. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody say, Hell, all my past mistake and error. All my past mistake and error. Father, I come. To you today, Father, I come to you have, today. Mercy have mercy on me. Remove my error, remove my iniquity, remove my sin. Open your mouth and pray the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My son, I call up my yelling, my pray, all my past error, all my past mistake, and my sin, and my iniquity. Father, remove it by the power of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lay my son, I call up my yelling. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, all of us will win. Have mercy on me. What's the way my sin is? My iniquity. In the name of Jesus, I commit my children to your hand, O Lord. Remove their sin. Remove their sin and worry. In the name of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name, we are praying. Now let us pray and ask God that the mercy of God will surround us and our family. That we begin to walk in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty, I pray, oh Lord, that we and our children and our family begin to walk in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of the Lord all the people that the enemy must set before us in our future, either today or in our future, or the in the future of our children, that the Holy Ghost will scatter them, that the Almighty God will rebook them in our life and family. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God Almighty, we pray, O Lord, that every spirit of tempter, every spirit of the people that want to tempt us or tempt our children, that want to bring us down, Father, let your fire of Holy Ghost scatter them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name, we are praying. Let's pray as many as are depressed in the world now. Maybe the people that I go contract because well, one day we eat. Say, yeah, was my wife and sister that saying that a lot of uh, thief now, I think petty thief now, are in Nigeria because they are looking for what they will eat because they lock that, they lock them down, and they don't have something to eat and they are doing all kind of stuff. That the Almighty God will have mercy. That the Almighty God will. Is there anyone that want to go astray? That the Almighty God will help them to 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 to. to to receive God, that the light of the gospel will enter into the life of men, that the power of God will be upon all men, and that they will not make mistake. And anyone that has made mistake, that the Almighty God will restore them back to the full. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Father, Jesus Christ. In the, in the name, name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. we pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, as many as going astray, that Lord Jesus Christ, 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 you will have mercy them, you will have mercy upon them, everyone that wants to go astray, that the enemy wants to you see, Father, we pray that by your power you will deliver them from the hand of the power and the, for, the, for the power of the enemy from the deceiver hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, deliver every everyone in the name of Jesus in the world, oh Lord, that they want they want to deceive, deliver them. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Two more prayer. Let's pray for 
that the Almighty God will save so through this uh, uh, administration of today, that as many as we hear this uh, message and uh, this Bible study, that the Almighty God will touch their hearts and they will come back to God. That the Lord will rebuke the spirit of anxiety in their heart. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, Lord God, God Almighty, Father, as many as we hear this, this message, this deep Bible study, Father, we pray, O Lord God Almighty, that you will you will deliver them, you will touch their hearts, you will give them salvation, save so through this uh, uh, Bible study of today, and remove every anxiety in the heart of as many as we hear this word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be. And in Jesus' name we are. I pray. Amen. Let's ask God, Father, Lord, whenever you come, count me worthy. Let me remain rapturable all the day of my life. Don't let me go back from suffering you. Let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you make me remain rapturable all the days of my life, that I will not go back from suffering you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help my children, help my Pentecost ministry worldwide not to go back from suffering you. And in Jesus' name, we are praying. Our dear Lord and Father, we thank Thank you. Thank you we bless your only name for this word of today. Amen. Father, we pray that everything that we have learned today shall not judge us in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. but we justify us in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that no member of Pentecost ministry we allow the spirit of our of anxiety in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. That the power of Holy Spirit will guide our soul, our heart, and our mind. That in everything, we begin to thank God and we make our request known unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. We will not allow the spirit of anxiety to rule our heart. Mm -hmm. So shall it be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Mm -hmm. When we shall gather again next week, Father, we pray for the power of God and the grace of God. And that Almighty, you will use it to keep each and every one of us safe and sound. Mm -hmm. And that when we shall gather again, we will see the blessing that is in your word. Thank you, O Lord, for answering our prayer. Hallelujah be unto that name. We thank you, O Lord, for we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our anchor. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor without compassion as with a sheep. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy your night. Love you all.